Hong Kong Direct is your weekly racing wrap with news, views, previews, interviews and special guests. And on a bumper show today, we're looking ahead to the weekend action and it's a class one cracker as well. All about speed with Hot King Prawn and Mr. Stunning, two of seven going round over the 1200 metres at uh, Sha Tin. Our special studio guest is Matthew Chadwick. And we'll also be weighing in a little bit later on with Karis Teton as well. Karis uh, Teton flying high, running third in the uh, Jockeys Premiership at this point in time. So plenty to get into. Great to have your company for today's show. So joined by Daryl Anderson as well from the, uh, the Racing Club. But Matthew first. Uh, well on course, Matthew, for um, beating last year's total as well. I mean, 22 winners, you're on to 17 already. So the season's going pretty well. It's going OK. <laughs> Could always go better. <laughs> Could be worse. Could be worse, could be better. Um, this weekend, we'll talk more about um, this sprint in a second. But you picked up the good ride of Voyage Warrior. You haven't actually ridden Voyage Warrior in track work trials or on a race day. How, how did that all come about with, um, with Ricky Yu? Well, I think he's got 1-1-3 one, one, there, so uh, he had to find a rider who could make the weight. It's a pretty good opportunity, though, in a race of that nature, because you've got some of um, Hong Kong's big guns going around. Well, it definitely looks like a hot race and uh, a challenging race, so my fella needs to step up off the handicaps. But it'll be very interesting. Mm. But it is a handicap, that's the key thing. And Daryl, welcome along as well. Uh, senior racing advisor to the Hong Kong Jockey Club Racing Club. How's your season going? Yeah, going pretty good, obviously. Um, it's somewhat different um, with the, the health uh, issues that we've got around mm. the world at the moment. But um, yeah, I guess I'm a little bit surprised I got the call back, given that I stopped a Thero <laughs> last time I was on the programme. But uh, nice to be back and uh, nice to be talking about the class one on, on, on Sunday. And we've got a new recruit that gets, uh, gets a start off the ballot on Sunday as well, Young Thunder. So looking forward to that. Flying Thunder. Young Thunder. Young Thunder. Flying Thunder is the other one, isn't it? Exactly. Right. Yeah. What are we trying to correct you for? <laughs> Young Thunder. There we go. All right, well, the big race uh, on the weekend, uh, the class uh, one comes up as race number four on the program, headed by Hot King Prawn. So this is a handicap. He gets top weight 133 from Barry Sue. Joe Moreira back on board the first time since International Day last year when he started as favourite. Mr. Stunning, a two-time winner of the International Sprint, but his win last year was the last time he won a race. Full of beauty, a five-time course and distance winner. Thanks forever, he's trying to book his ticket to Dubai. Big party, the big grey, back. Grant Vanderkirk in the saddle. Voyage Warrior with Matthew on board. And then Country Star, who's a five-time winner over this trip. All five of those wins have been at Happy Valley, but with Alfie Chan on board, takes seven pounds off his back. You'll think he's just about loose. That is uh, country star. So we'll start with uh, Voyage Warrior, Matthew. So first time you're riding the horse, um, but from what you've seen so far, what, what are your impressions of him? Well, I liked his race when Joel won on him back of the 1,000 metres. Uh, it was nice to see him back at almost his best. He's still got to prove himself around the turn. I said it's interesting with 113 on his back. Uh, he's still got to overcome the handicap, so... so you still got to find a couple of lengths, I think. I think the interesting thing that, for, for me, is is there is a number of horses in the race that like to go forward and lead. Lead. Who who is going to lead? I mean, you've had a look at the race. You've had a look at the opposition. Where do you think you'll be in the in the running? Well, from the gate, it'll be interesting how the other riders react to the situation because uh, all of them seem to have a bit of pace out the gates. So. Uh, I think they will be looking at their weights as well, trying to see how to best sort themselves out with that and handle themselves. Uh, fortunately for us, we've only got one and three. Mm. It looks like his best runs have been from when he's been on up on the pace, either leading or sitting off. So off second. So I'd have to speak to Ricky to be more confirmed and more concrete about what we're going to do. But. Uh, I don't see why we should change too much from his racing pattern. Because uh, he's a big horse, and with that sort of weight, again, much like Country Star, he's going to think he's loose. And when he's won his races, I mean, early days, they were talking, saying, maybe not everyone, but I certainly thought he was going to make up into a group horse. So this is, you know, for 113 pounds, getting 20 pounds of Hawking Prawn, if he is a group horse, this is his opportunity, really, isn't it? Well, I think we definitely would like to just uh, put his best foot forward again. Uh, if he can improve off his run two starts to go down, th down the straight, then. He should put in a very good race with that lightweight. Um, I think the others obviously have more to prove mm. with their weight and their ability. Our fella just can go in there and enjoy himself, hopefully get around that turn and kick clear. I get, I get, it's the 1,200 metres that's the question, isn't it? Whether, whether it he's going like to run out a so strong 1,200. For sure. So mm. far today in his career, that seems to be the question mark. So mm. his ability, especially early on, 
as you said, uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. Mm. He's just got to put it on on, on the put up race day twelve hundred. So what about the rest of them then, Daryl? Um, the class acts Hot King Pro, and who's coming back off a run behind Beauty Generation. They tried him over the fourteen hundred. Wasn't a complete disaster by mm. any stretch. But no. twelve hundred is going to be better for him. Yep, it is for sure. Um, it is the weight. He's going to get a nice cushy run off off the speed. Um, yeah, he, he's he's a major player for sure. I mean, he's I guess the benchmark, isn't he, yeah. um, of the of the runners. Um, Mr. Stunning will go back. Um, just how he's quick just, they're going to go. He just lost a beat, Mr. Stunning. He, he always was the benchmark for a long time. Yeah, here, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I I think he has, but you know, you class is permanent. You, ne you <laughs> never write off, you know, a, a class act. So I'd never do that. But uh, in terms of habit, having him figuring in the top two or three um, at the business end on on Sunday, I'm just not sure. What about the, the other up-and-coming horses, uh, Matthew? Big party. A little bit like Voyage Warrior. When he wins, you think, geez, this horse is an absolute superstar. But he's had a little bit of a break and comes in fresh, and his fresh-up record isn't the best, is it? No, but he's definitely improved this season. Yeah. He looks like he's come back, he's relaxed, and when he has won, he said he, he kicks clear and he's got that turn of foot and he, he sees the distance out without a problem. Uh, I think he's if he gets the right run, he's going to be... I, I would think it'd be in the finish. Yeah, and, and thanks forever as well. Possibly going to Dubai, want a big run here, wouldn't he? Well, he needs to if he yeah. wants to book his ticket. But uh, he's another one that's been improving, improving all the time. And he, off the field, he looks like he's the one rightly placed to take it out on paper. Uh, the others, as we said, have been around a bit longer, and the others have themselves to prove. Mm. He looks right in the in the weights, and with a draw. He's got all the pressure on him, whereas the rest of us, we've got to show what, what we can do. Absolutely. Well, Zach Purton jumps back on board from Barrier 4 as well. He's ridden him three times, Zach, and he's won on him twice. Let's go back to Hot King Prawn, though. He'll be reunited with Joe Moreira. Well, he's, he's been doing very well. He has had that surgery, and he was able to prove he overcame the issue he had. He's, he's been a very good horse, and uh, I do have a very high opinion about him. Hopefully he performs at his best. On doing so, I'm, 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 I have no doubt that he's, he's a capable horse to be winning this, this type of races. It's an interesting race, field of seven. You've won on six of the horses in the race. The only one you haven't is thanks forever. How does he measure up, particularly under handicap conditions, against his rivals? Look, uh, because of the handicap condition, it... It, it is going to be a very even race, in my opinion. Uh, even if I do have confidence on my on my guy, he's and he deserves that for what he has done so far. I gotta say, whoever wins this race is not going to win by a big margin just because of the handicap system. And comparing him to others uh, in set weight race, I would put him as as first. But handicap wise, that that will be some others that will make it the race be very interesting. There goes uh, Joe's thoughts, and he does have a unique um, take on the race, having ridden, say, nearly all the <laughs> fields. Them, yeah. <laughs> um, Hot King Prawn on ratings, he's the, the best horse, but he's got the big way. I, it's a very tricky race to, to work out. It is a very, very tricky race. You've got um, Joe, um, obviously, back on Hot King Prawn, so there's a change of jockey there. We've got Zach on, on Thanks Forever, so we've got a, a change of jockey there. You've got the whole weight thing to, to consider, and you've got, obviously, uh, Alfie on, on, on Country Star right down on on 106 pounds or, or 48 kilos. Mm. So, as Joe said, there's probably not going to be too much uh, between them in the end. So, yeah, trying to work through all the, the dynamics of who's going to lead, how fast they'll go, etc., etc., is a, a little bit tricky. It's a big moment. This will be Alfie's um, biggest ride so far, as well for John Sykes. This is his second ride for John on a horse that is not without a chance himself with that featherweight, is he, country star? Where's another horse? I see in the handicaps, yeah. he's got a... He's just come back off a layoff, so he's got to come back and prove himself again. He's been running a couple of decent races, so uh, let's see what let's wait and see what he does. See what happens. Yeah, big moment for Alfie. So, got to go for one, Daryl. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Yeah, good on you, Andrew. Um, <laughs> uh, I th think either Thanks Forever or or uh, Big Party will. Will, will win the race. Um, I was a little bit, just going back and, and having a look at the replay of Big Party over the 1200 at Happy Valley a couple of starts ago, he just wanted to turn off 
just switch mm. off that last little bit and Joe had to give him a little bit of a shake up so for that reason I'm, I'm going to go for, for thanks forever because yeah. uh, I, I was reasonably impressed uh, with his run um, in the Centenary Cup a couple of starts ago under handicap conditions he had to do a little bit at the start of the race and he was still kicking strongly at the end so uh, he'll do me uh, right. thanks forever thanks forever all right there you go well good luck with the voyage ride math we're going to talk about Matthew's uh, the rest of his rides on the program um, a little bit later on but with the derby approaching um, happy to say that we've been sent through some pictures of a former we're going to play a game of guess who but you already know who this horse is now but uh, a former derby champion from two years ago that is ping high star Got to thank Sam Bleakley at uh, Hyden Park Stud in uh, New Zealand. Sent these uh, pictures through. Ping High Star now enjoying his retirement there. They use him to keep some of the younger horses in the Wheelings Company as well. He's uh, teaching the ropes and um, just fantastic um, to see him because unfortunately we never got to see him. Although he won a derby, mm. we never got to see his full potential. There he is out in the field enjoying himself. Loving it. You actually rode in his derby as well. You were still in front with probably about 100 to go, Matthew, on the golden age. That's what you told me. <laughs> he came past <laughs> with a whoosh. Um, but uh, there he is, uh, they're loving life. And um, yeah, he's just having a great time. And Sam's three year old daughter, Kendall, as well, his particular favourite uh, with him. So that's Ping High Star again, thanks to, uh, to Sam at Hyden Park. Kurt Stud. So plenty more still to come as we head off to a break, though. That was Ping High Star now. Let's look at him at his very best as he won the 2018 Derby under Ryan Moore. Ping High Star racing up the Singapore Sling. They got to the Golden Age. Ping High Star tearing away with the Derby. John Size produces a masterpiece with Ping High Star. Welcome back to Hong Kong Direct. Uh, more with studio guests Daryl Anderson and uh, Matthew Chadwick very shortly. First up, though, we're weighing in with Karis Teton. Hi, I'm Kari Steeton, jockey in Hong Kong from Mauritius. Uh, of course, uh, there's a few big names, uh, the name like Frankie De Tori and Christoph Smeo. Uh, I would say last season, Mr. Stunning uh, in a Hong Kong sprint that was uh, an incredible, an incredible day. Mr. Stunning in front from DB Pin and beat the clock. Mr. Stunning, he's the man. Wins the sprint again for Karis Teton. I've always wanted to win one of the international races, and to do that on a horse like Mr. Stunning was uh, was pretty special for me. Um, yeah, it was the, the whole plan came together. Able friend, he was just that special uh, in Hong Kong. Um, he's done very well for, for the owners and the trainers and I was very lucky to, to be able to ride him. Able Friend, the champ, storming down the outside. It's Gold Fun in front. Able Friend, what a magnificent return by the horse of the year. Uh, professionally, uh, I would say winning the IJC this season and yeah, I think that was it. Maybe think a bit more about making some big decision. In racing or in life? In life. <laughs> <laughs> Respect the, the culture, try to blend in. And uh, working wise, I would say when I, my first meeting at um, Happy Valley, uh, I got a very good advice from a jockey called Wei Shong Mawing. Uh, how to get the horses going just before the straight. Lewis Hamilton, um, because I like his, uh, his lifestyle, uh, the way he lives his lifestyle, um, his personality and uh, all the things he do. So I'm engaged at the moment with uh, Xavier and we're getting married the uh, end of the season in July. And uh, she means a lot to me. Um, you know, I met her in Hong Kong, and uh, since she's walked into my life, so much, thing, so much things has changed. Um, she's uh, helped me with so many things and supported me with uh, with the up and down. So it's always nice to have somebody behind you to to always supporting you. To try not to 
get into the parade ring late because I've got this bad manners of change my silks, uh, my, my, my breeches and shirts after every second or third race. I've clapped a few fines, so I need to get out of that bad habit. Um, I do miss uh, Olivier Deleuze and Rispoli now, because they were like, you know, the, the cool guys and the fun in the jockey's room. Uh, take example, like Oli, he would, he would like, you know, come to races and even he, he have a bad day or he doesn't even ride a winner. At the end of the race meeting, he would dress up so smart, like we know, and he would walk past all of us. He would be like, Oli, you are the best, looking in the mirror. So just like we miss those things. There goes uh, Karis, great stories there. So have you, have you done one of those yet for us? No. Stand by, he'll be up very shortly as well. Right, so let's get into, uh, back to the, uh, the Sunday uh, racing and have a look at uh, Matthew's rides. Um, eight rides um, you've got in total, uh, Matthew. Um, as far as the, the bigger ones outside of um, Voyage Warrior concerned, um, another one in the sprint later on. Um, so not it is a computer patch, but also Winning Delight, um, who's a good winner at uh, Happy Valley a couple of weeks ago. A big price, but um, potentially big plans for him as well. Yeah, looks like that. Hopefully, it all goes smoothly and uh, they come to fortune. Because if he wins, then he's a chance maybe of, um, of, of heading, making the heading towards the derby. Yeah. So they'd have to pay up for that, wouldn't they? Yeah. I don't think I don't think he's. Um, paid up for it yet. But. Well, the selection announcements uh, made next um, next week. Um, at the moment, it's on a rating of 82, but it was a super win at Happy Valley of 2,200 metres. Only one over. We'd won first up, hadn't he? A big prize. Um, this was his first try of any trip like that. He travelled and quickened like a good horse. Yeah, I think that earlier on he was just acclimatising. He's just he seems very raw still. He's he seems to be untapped. So that's a bit of a question mark and a bit. Uh, it's very interesting going into into the races. We expect him to run well last time. We got a lovely run through, and uh, you could see in the straight he was still a bit green, running around a bit. Mm. But he quickened nicely, so hopefully if he can do that again this weekend, he'll get the ratings points up and uh, book his ticket. OK, looking, looking at the opposition, the other four-year-olds, Beauty Legacy, Reliable Team and some of the older horses, how do you, how do you assess your chances? What degree of confidence, I guess, is my question going into the weekend? Well, look, if we're looking for the future, I'd want to hope we win mm. in order to get those points and uh, to be competitive in this what's looking like to be a competitive derby field. So. Yeah, but it give you a good idea wherever you finish in relation to, to Beauty Legacy and Reliable Team didn't really fire in the cup, did he? But it gives you a good idea going forward. Um, the season in total, though, so far, I mentioned at the start of the show, 17 winners so far. Um, winning Delight was a good winner for you. And so you had a couple of decent prices for Casper this um, season. Well, Lightning Steed was a, another one. Um, what have we got to uh, highlight, though, for you so far? Highlight? I'm not sure. <laughs> winning the Derby eventually. Well, that'll be a future highlight. Yeah. Uh, so far. Whenever I get to go in the winning circle. Yeah, it's, but regardless of uh, whether they come from, they're still. Is it a bit different though, riding at the moment? Like at Happy Valley, the winner last when was it last week? Two weeks ago, winning delight. You don't have the the high fives coming back in from the beer guard at the moment. So a slightly different feeling as far as that's concerned. Yeah, the atmosphere is definitely down. Uh, I think, but once the gates open, you don't really notice. Mm. And I think for us, it's about winning, isn't it? So. Yeah. The main goal is to get past the post first, uh, but yeah, definitely the atmosphere is a lot for, a lot down and uh, it's a lot quieter. But it's been a few weeks now already, so he's already starting to get used to it. It feels like the norm already. One horse I sorry I meant to mention before is um, Computer Patch in that sprint. There's a really good sprint as well, thousand meter dash. He's dropping back, in, but the likes of Duke Wine, Stronger, and horses like that again, some some really good up and coming sprinters in that field. Yeah, it looks like a nice a nice race, competitive race. Uh, is a horse that has shown a visibility. I think with a few weeks in between his runs, we'll probably have done him good, going back to the five furlongs. And uh, if he's freshened up nicely, I think John will have him well and he'll be able to hit the line nice, All right. nice okay. and strongly. All right, well, looking ahead to the, the diary then. Uh, obviously, it's uh, sharp in this weekend. There's a couple of weather races um, as well, and 11 in total on the programme. Um, but it is race number four is that Class 1 sprint. Uh, back to Happy Valley then again uh, next uh, week. And again, 
box keeps ticking down to the BMW Hong Kong Derby. We get the selections announcement uh, next week and the barrier draw the week after. All right, that's just about it. We always like to finish off with a classic race from the vault, though, and seeing as Matthew's here, California memory. Matthew, what are your memories of uh, him? Two-time winner of um, the Cup on International Day, and I think you were the first local homegrown rider to win the um, one of the group ones um, back in 2011. It's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to find another one like him. It was um, you rode him a bit differently that day. It didn't go very quick. He's normally used to sort of used to him being back in the field and coming with a withering run, but you jumped out and positioned right up behind the speed. Well, he was always a horse with his uh, quirks because you know, he he never really relaxed and he was only so small that we were trying to switch him off early in his races, uh, and it worked. Obviously, the first up he won only won his first Group One, but uh, as he grew confident and he got much more mature about his racing. He always jumped well and he, when he drew the gates one, ones in the group in the internationals, it was just silly if we were going to take him back so mm. we just had him where he was comfortable. Yeah, it was a big race as well. Last, the previous year's Derby winner, Ambitious Dragon in the field as well, so it was a super field and it's certainly a group one as well. But we just about run out of time. So, Daryl, many thanks for coming. Good luck on the weekend with your horse. Yep, uh, Young Thunder, looking forward to, uh, to seeing him step out. And uh, we've you know, actually had a couple of extra new recruits arrived uh, last week as well that'll join uh, David Hall and Chris So as well. So a couple right. of, uh, an extra couple of new um, uh, horses that we're looking forward to. Uh, the members enjoying so excellent we'll have you back again shortly as well matthew thanks for coming in as well and uh, good luck on the weekend thank you all right well that's the show thanks uh, for watching and leave you this week with california memory back in 2011 on international day what a super ride super race and a super win as well enjoy this and we'll see you again on sunday we're bringing all the action from hong kong direct to you California Memory stalking the leaders. Chadwick's coming off the fence as they turn from Bywood, although he hasn't got out as yet. Now Ambitious Dragon cuts loose at the 350. Boy, he's got a paralyzing turn of foot. Ambitious Dragon, he's going after Zazu. Bywood between them. California Memory's leaving and Irian down the outside. Ambitious Dragon hits the front. He hasn't kicked away. California Memory gets his second wind. Irian the outside, but California Memory got going the last hundred and California Memory wins it for Chadwick.